again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I am Carla Garrick. Last and, time I looked. <laughs> and almost out of February, thank God. It'd be great. Um, well, you know, it was my almost. birthday week. We almost. did uh, Acapulco. Yep. It's leap year, so yep. we got an extra February. But then we're in March, then we're in Liberty Forum, yep. then we're in... Uh, then it's summer. Let's just go with summer. Summer. <laughs> um, and yeah. I just told Tammy, for what it's worth, for folks back home, I was like, I haven't read the paper in two weeks. I don't like the new format. Do you do you get the you get the paper paper? I get the paper paper. I get paper. the online version, and they changed it. I hate it. I really hate it. My computer, for some reason, and Dan can't. He hasn't really tried. No, no offense, Dan, but. Um, Sometimes things just won't load on my laptop. It's so weird. Okay. And Dan says it's got to be a DNS thing or so, uh, whatever. Um, some things load fine. The union leader I always struggle with. Yeah. So now they've got this new thing where I have to, it, it, and I usually get through about maybe five pages and then it sits there for the rest of the day. So like part of the reason I read the union leader is to read the obituaries because I like to know if people I know died. I can't even get to the obituary. Like my, it locks up. It's just very frustrating because I, I, it's prettier to look at. Right. I didn't really need pretty. I just needed functional. Yeah. So I, mean, I haven't read might be all one the newspaper either. We... Although I did read parts of it until it locked up this morning, um, which is what I brought. I brought two things, and they both relate to each other, and they both relate to just things in general. Um, let's talk trash again. <laughs> and not gossip. Just trash. So trash talk, uh, <laughs> men talk. That's exactly what I was like. I like trash talk. So this. All was, right. So now I know what we can make the subject the show. Yes, I, show I, I always think it's funny. Trash talk. So this is actually, I think, from yesterday's paper, but I don't. Whatever. Well, it says yesterday, but it was in today's paper. So again, I don't understand because if you haven't noticed, the Sunday paper now comes on Saturday. So I did notice that, but also I forget if I said it here. I know I said it somewhere where. Um, you know, I'm trying to get the Newsweek. So I was quoted in Newsweek, which I was kind of chuffed about. And I, you know, I put everything yeah. up in my office and I was like, oh, I want the physical copy of the Newsweek. So I've been going, uh, now I call, but I've been mean, going the, to the place in the mall. So, so Barnes and Noble is oh. one of the few places because the bookstore downtown doesn't carry what magazines. About this, the, the there's a place in the mall, the Hudson News. Is that still in the mall? Uh, I don't know. But, but, but even at the airport, they didn't have it. But so basically... Barnes & Noble's Newsweeks are a month behind, and they don't stock the new one until, until the old, the, ones, the old ones sell out. Now, That's not help news. me understand <laughs> if your periodical is called Newsweek, and it is the news of that week. Do you want to read the news four weeks later? Right, like, no! Yeah, it's, weird, it's like, right? no wonder you're going bankrupt. Uh, so... The article so yesterday's news yes, yes, for well, today. It, for, that was in today's paper. Um, was about, it says, Manchester officials want to talk trash with property owners. And then basically... The, oh, now they want to talk at well, least. Because like, last time, right, just for folks back they just, home... They just were going to make a decision to stop trash pickup. So, so just to, to, as a reminder, so basically maybe like four or five months ago, I think, uh, yeah. the aldermen decided that any building with five or more units, mm -hmm. they would no longer pick up the trash and they would expect the property owner to have a dumpster and to sort of handle their own trash trash collection. Now, as someone who is, you know, for right. private markets, right. I'm like, okay, maybe that is a better solution. I would say you have to deduct whatever the well, savings you know, are from someone's property taxes. That, you should hope that, I mean, there is never like a, your trash cost this and my trash cost this, but it should be a reduction in staff and a reduction for the the city as a whole because that's the reality is you and I pay for a lot of things that don't it aren't as a result of us you know crappy people sorry the pardon the pun putting <gasps> out streets are no I'm just so saying, dirty on the west side anyways finish your thought and then I'll come back because um so so basically they, they so so the alderman took a vote I think they yes, voted think they on did. it actually or maybe it was a committee meeting but but like it got really far down the line like it was happening it, it, and people read about it in the newspaper ever was like wait a second what this is going to cost me yep. I think it was between five and ten thousand well, a year on, you know you know I mean it was it was not an insignificant ask to suddenly foist right. on the people who are, you know, actually housing people. And um, 
And so they kind of went back to the drawing board. I think they yeah, decided they, they, they need said, to, have, to think this have conversations mm -hmm. and at a minimum talk about, hey, how do we offset this? You can't just be like, hey, I'm going to make you pay for these things that you used to get as part of yeah. your services. And oh, by the way, you just have to continue yeah. to pay, pay, pay. So, so that's what happened. So now they're talking, um, and actually, I guess originally they were proposed in 2023, but that isn't when we heard about it. We heard about it in the fall. So basically the public works, solid waste people proposed it, and then it got to the alderman by the fall, whatever. That's neither here nor there. So now they'd like to talk about it again because they, they're still pushed. This is still where they think they want to go. So there were some things that I thought I was trying to point out in here. Um, it says, um, Clowardy from the Department of Public Works is saying, it's not a matter of us not having enough money to dispose of the trash or hauling landfill costs. This is more about cleaning up the city. At the Department of Public Works, we struggle mightily with vacancies. Across the department, we have 53 current vacancies. We have the money to pay people, but we can't hire people. So there's the first problem. Why is it that nobody can find people to hire? And I can guess why, because we've given them all free stuff. See, but I don't buy that anymore. I think there's something deeper well, no, going on. Well, if you go on. to the grocery store right now after lunch, you will see a bunch of very much able-bodied people buying groceries during the typical workday that do not work. There are way too many people who work limited hours because they get free, free healthcare benefits from the government, or they don't, they don't work, or... There's just too much. I mean, it's, it, there's some other, I'm not saying it's the only dynamic, but the more free, we both know, the more free stuff, free stuff you give to people, the less incentive there is to do for yourself. If everything's free, why would I get up and do my own, right? So they're having a hard time filling positions, which is fair. Like, I don't know how they're supposed to, they can't just miraculously address it. You could probably pay $10 more an hour and they still wouldn't be able to fill these jobs. Because who really wants to be a trash collector, honestly? So... That makes you go. Because it's actually a very dangerous it job. It's, it's, it's actually it top more, three dangerous yes. jobs it, compared to. It causes to, more workers' comps claims um, than any other any other. So, so anyone job. who wants to like thank a cop, you should yeah. thank your trash yeah, it's collector not, It's not an easy job. So um, there's that problem. And then, so, so, and then there's the problem that, that came out of the thing in the fall was so you've got these big units. In fairness to you and I as a private homeowner, you and I shouldn't be subsidizing their trash pickup, nor should anybody else. Like, that's not my problem that you own a eight unit big building and the city, the city, I don't think it's wrong for the city to say, we're not gonna pick up your trash down at this point down the road. Like give them a year to figure it out or some, you know, this is not always an easy decision. Then understand that that is, even though it shouldn't cost more, and it probably in the big picture doesn't cost more, um, those, pro those tenants in those buildings are going to have to realize that their landlord just incurred another expense. Which So when your rent goes up, don't whine that they're just greedy landlords because the reality is, is those are costs. So then I started reading more, and it was interesting because my alderman, Bill Berry, he says he's received phone calls from a resident recently who complained that there was either a six or eight unit building, and I can probably guess which one, that only has three trash cans and one recycling bin. <laughs> they overload them. I believe trash is picked up on money, and as soon as the trash is picked up, it's full that day, and they just keep putting more on top of it. And we all have seen this. You drive by certain places. First of all, there's supposed to be an ordinance that says you can't store your trash cans on the sidewalk. Fair. I don't want to live in squalor. You're like, I want to live someplace nice. You take care of your front yard. Everybody should take care of the front yards. So there's that problem. You see that all the time. And you do see people, and they've got the trash bin, and then this trash bin, and they're mounted over, and I think you do know there's an arm that comes and picks that up. Right? And then there's a pile of stuff on the ground. Well, who do you think's picking that up? And, and what's the solution, right? So then I, I, as we got talking about it in this article, it talks about... Um, it says that there is no minimum, like, because Barry asked, is there a minimum that, number of bins? Well, there should be. If you have an eight-unit apartment, you should have to have, a, if you're going to have city trash pickup, you should have to have at least eight bins. 
everybody should have their own trash can. That's just common sense to me. Or so, at least four, I guess. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't we know. we never fill between two of we, us. We, we never don't either, fill but our we're trash probably can. not your typical a lot of tenants. A lot of well, it depends. Um, and again, maybe that's based on bedrooms. You know what I mean? Um, he's, so the, somebody from the city says there is no minimum in the ordinance. However, overflow is covered. If a property is overflowing on their trash or recycling bar barrels, that property will see, receive notice of a violation. Do you really think that happens? Because I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen. Probably not. Because if that happened, why does some things just sit there for months on end? And what's the... <laughs> and then the all those uh, bed bug right. filled so mattresses you'll see As much see as I don't want to... I'm like, I don't want to... I'm not trying to be, you know, awful to people or whatever, but the reality is, is this is one of those situations where we have a carrot. We have the choice of a carrot or a stick. What's the carrot? Well, the carrot is you don't have to... If you're going to use the city services, you don't have to deal with a private company. Like, the convenience of just... It just happens, and it's a hidden cost in your taxes. Um, and your neighborhood is cleaner because they pick up the trash, in theory. The stick should be finding people who don't follow the basic rules. I mean, if you can't, and I, Dan said, but then there's a cost of administering that. And I'm like, okay, but we don't have trash collectors, and maybe, maybe we'd have more trash more efficient trash pickup if they weren't having to pick up people's trash off the ground. You know what I'm hearing here is a business opportunity for a enterprising young fellow to uh, start their own trash collection well, business I'm sure to it, figure out who these big, uh, big uh, unit people are to be like, hey, I'm going to well, hire do, 10 people I from the 54 that the I opening do think is. I that um, the private companies, when this all came up, said they could handle it. So it's not that there's not a way to have the trash, because I'm sure it's not as simple as just starting a, co yep, there's, there's all sorts of regulations about trash and things. But my point is, is that people think to tend to just go, well, we shouldn't do this, or we should do this, and without thinking about like, well, how is that gonna ha happen, and who pays for it? And ultimately, when you have trash, and I'm not blaming the, the big unit buildings, because there's just as many problems with single family homes, right? You just tend to notice it more when it's a bigger pile. So then, um, you know, should you and I and every other taxpayer in the city be the ones subsidizing the bad behavior of others? That's costing more money. I mean, we already do it with the homeless and the drug addicts and all that stuff. Their actions cost us more money. Um, on a, si a side note, there was a fire across the street from my house the other day. Well, I say that. Um, I step out of my house. In, in a property or like on public land? I step land? out of my house and I go, oh, something's burning, right? And I get in the car. Marion was at our house. We were going off to wherever. And we could drive down the driveway. And um, I, a fire truck goes by. You know, oh, see, I thought there was. And I see at there's a building that's address is Varney Street, but it's down below. Okay. It's actually off of Durham Street or Dunham Street. And... I can see, you know, smoke come because there's a wood burning stove in there. Now I don't know if it's still occupied. I don't really know what the deal is. There was a, a zoning thing recently. I don't know, whatever. Um, but I see that and I think, well, that's not what they're going for, right? Like that's not a fire. So we see a big truck go by and a small. Um, I think it was like the district chief or something. Off he goes or the response unit. Right? So nosy me, Mary left. She goes, you're going to go follow them. I'm like, well, I'm curious where, if, where they're going because this is my neighborhood. So I see, we go down and I'm talking to a neighbor down there who's like, there's no fire. It's just like coming out of the chimney. By the time they were done, there were four ladder trucks there. Mm. And two, like the, chief, the deputy chief or whatever and this response unit and an ambulance. And all I kept thinking was, why are there four ladder trucks here? There's not a fire. Like... You've got to wonder sometimes. And, I mean, uh, that would be an interesting number uh, for folks who watch the show regularly. Like, one of the things we talk about is, hey, can we have better accounting of how money's spent? Like, that seems like the basics <laughs> of running right? stuff, right? And so that would be the kind of thing I would want to know. How much does it cost for a call out in the city right. of one truck? Right. And then if four trucks have gone, let's say it's a 1000 bucks a truck. Uh, we've talked about this in the past as well, that the, the small, the chief uh, yeah, SUV that, right. or whatever, like oftentimes that could go out first. Well, I mean, I can understand sending a truck because if it, if it is somebody's house on fire, you don't want to be waiting. But four? 
didn't the first truck identify that there was no fire? Like, and then if not the first truck, did the second or the third or the fourth? You well, know? I think sometimes it's also, you know, the, the thing is we sort of scaled up these departments and these things and technology has become more sophisticated. Uh, you know, fires now are a different thing to in the past. I mean, you literally, instead of having fire, um, Sprinklers? sprinklers that cost a fortune and actually make it yep. really hard. It's one of the reasons we have a housing yep. crisis is because of the regulations yep. related to fire stuff. It could literally be like you have an app and it's mandatory to have this app on your phone and you just press the button when yeah, something a... <laughs> happens, right? Well, or something. There's just oh, seems my to goodness. be no... So, well, what it is, is we are so stuck in the paradigms that we're in, and people just really struggle to think outside the box. <laughs> Louie and I were talking about it this it's morning, true. and it was just like, why do we keep repeating these these really idiotic, I mean, I was on a... It was I, was, a, I, I was on a patriarchy tear this morning, which I don't frequently do, but poor Louie was like, man, I think you need to go take a hike somewhere. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, people are just very caught up in, in certain paradigms. And so thinking, well, how can we do it differently? Right. So then I is, got th I'm laughing. So there was that article I print that. So then I start reading Facebook or whatever. And then I see this and I'm like, it's all the same dilemma. Like, this is all the same. So then I see an article on MUR. And this is out of Pittsburgh, but it applies everywhere. About how more and more small businesses are starting to charge a fee, a percentage, if you use your credit or debit card. And my brain goes like this. Well, you can't really blame them. It's a cost. It's an added cost. Um, I know I, at the GOAT, they charge you for using paying with a credit card, and I'm conscious of that. And if I'm going to go to the GOAT, I should probably remember to bring cash, you know. So in the article, basically, um, you know, people are saying they're still, restaurants are still struggling to get back since COVID, you know, all these things. And these are added expenses that they just don't feel, you know, it can Remember add Remember when we said you're going to break the world with your stupid, stupid COVID policies? Yeah. Yeah, well, the world. we were right. So, um, I, I mean, this doesn't surprise me at all. Like, I always thought it was strange. For, back to who should pay. If I have the convenience of swiping a card instead of having to go to the bank and get cash, it might cost me 3% on top of my bill. I'm conscious of that. Now, it is it is a convenience for the, the retailer, the business also, because it gives people more ways to pay. But I also can appreciate that if you are paying with cash and I'm paying with credit, should your prices be higher to offset my needs? Because that's what it is. It's the same argument when people say everybody should make $15 minimum wage. And I'm like, as long as you're okay with a $30 hamburger for lunch, great. And they go, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, who do you think's paying it? Someone's paying these things. Someone is paying these credit card fees, which are like tens of thousands of dollars when you're a restaurant every year. And I chuckled because in the Facebook comments, I was like, no, people. But this is actually, this is the inflationary squeeze, it's, oh, it's I think, totally, right? So yes. what's, what's happening is we are in dire economic yes. straits. Um, you know, what, one of the weird things that's now currently happening is most people are living off credit. No one talks about this, right? I'm but glad we're not. Right, me Love. either. But, 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 but it's the reality. People right. have... A lot of credit and yeah. credit cards. And because of the money printing that, yeah. you know, has, you know, gone through the roof. In fact, I read today that um, the amount of $100 notes in circulation are higher than ever doubled in the last you two need years. Now. Well, yeah. You don't just need ones and fives. Now you need hundreds and fifties. But part of the issue that is now coming down the pike is uh, because of inflation, the interest rates are going yep. up. The interest rates influence your credit. Yep. And so this is probably somewhere in yep. that mix where they're going, wait a second, we can't we can't eat this cost anymore because we've already, I've already uh, had to eat the yes. grocery costs exactly. because, you know, you're, I, I mean, imagine it being a, your local lunch place. They are dealing with the ever-increasing price of the products to make your lunch. 
and staff increases. And then they have to, but then on the on the uh, consumer side, people are resistant to appreciate it. And then they're shocked that their hamburger is now $3 more, where I look at it and go, well, I was bound to happen. Everything's expensive. So this is just one more what's normally hidden Right, cost. is now being passed through to the and customer who is no longer right for anything. And you should just like eat your crickets and shut up. So <laughs> what I found interesting was this one man's comment. And this isn't just in this instance. I've heard this. I hear this all too often. Go Can ahead. I, uh, I just want to say one thing also related to this with the groceries. Not only is your, your, your hamburger $3 more expensive, <laughs> it's a third smaller. Yeah, if you're buying a jar of sauce. I was at the <laughs> airport, and I bought a water that cost $5.49, and, and it was, it was not a liter. Yeah. It was 700 yeah. milliliters. Yeah, I noticed that And I was bacon, like, that is a, a third lot, shorter. A yeah, lot the, of bacon is 12 ounces now. And you're yes. like, wait, what happened to a pound? That is officially called shrinkflation, yep. and it's the government's yep. fault. Yep. It's not greedy so, landowners, on, the government. On this stuff, I, this one man commented, and I was like, gosh, I, I don't understand why people don't understand. He, his response was, I don't, it's ridiculous that they're doing, that businesses are doing this because they can write it off as operating expenses. And I thought, well, yes, they can, but you're confusing with writing something off versus paying for it. And people do this with landlords all the time. They go, well, they can write off that new furnace. Okay, writing off just <laughs> reduces the amount of additional money you're gonna you have to pay. give to the government. Right. That's a whole nother layer of expense. It doesn't make the cost of it go away. <laughs> They're like, oh, you wrote it off so you didn't this spend the, the two, you know. This is part of the basic economic um, but gee, Tammy, Sim it's only we like talk lack people. of knowledge. I'm like, but why don't we teach people about economics in school? I don't know. Why don't we teach people how to balance a why credit don't card? Why do you teach people where money comes or from? Or how, how a credit card works? We don't teach people because your ignorance is the way they fleece you. <laughs> well, it's just it boggles me that there's like grown and this old this man was an older gentleman, and I thought. You know, I personally would like fewer hidden costs. If I, that's why I'm not a fan of restaurants that don't allow tipping. Let me tip for quality service. Don't work that in. The minute you work that into the the price of the food, I can guarantee that the quality of my of the service will go down and my price goes up. And I have no control over it other than picking a different place. Uh, and this is true because in Brazil where they do not tip, maybe they do now, but they didn't 30 years yep. ago. Nobody I mean, it's sort of like Mexican service is a little like that too, although the culture does seem more tip oriented now than maybe 10 years ago or 15 like years ago. Good luck getting somebody to, well, it's just, it's, yeah, a, it's very laid back. It's very I'll laid get to back. You when I get yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. I'm sure we're almost out of time. So anyways, that's my, that was like, see, there was a theme all about like, I don't know, <laughs> and cost and stupidity um, and so, trash. So we have a few things coming up. I do want to mention, uh, so we got our five minute warning there. Uh, there are some bills next week. Okay. So that right to know bill, the HB 1002, is a disaster. Uh, while I was in Mexico, uh, I was like, just kill it, just kill it. I thought that seemed obvious. No, they have amended this into some bloodbath of gross disaster. Yeah, sometimes it's just better to start oof, over. Oof. Like, they so, start so it's over going to the Senate, I believe, on the 6th. And I'm kind of at the stage where I'm like, maybe I need to have like 100 people show up and be like, you know what, no, we need to kill this and come back with something better. Because if this bill goes through, it is gonna be a- It's gonna be a backward step for, it, for transparency, for it's, sure. It's a, it's, yeah, it's just, it's terrible. So let's see if we can nip it in the bud, as um, we like to say. For fun, um, next, oh, I don't even know, March 9th. I don't March, know if yeah. it's a Saturday or Sunday anymore. <laughs> March 9th. Um, there is the Libertarian versus Republican charity hockey game over at JFK <laughs> Arena. It's 10 bucks for adults, kids get in free. It is a fun event. It is literally just for fun. 
team of uh, Republicans wearing red and a team of Libertarians wearing yellow and black, and they just play, and um, they've done this for two years, and we're tied. Republicans won, Libertarians won. Um, all proceeds go to Benefit Children's Scholarship Fund, which does great things for kids and their educational needs here in New Hampshire. Did you see that? So all the, the nasty Democrats are complaining about the child, the EFAs, right? The Education of Freedom course, Accounts, right? They and, hate them. And, um, and so the tweets I saw this week were all like, someone is spending money on Amazon and museums and right. schools and violin <laughs> lessons <laughs> and soccer classes and... And I looked at the tweet and I was like, listen to yourself. That, that, that sounds like someone, whoever's doing this, this kid's getting an actual right. education. Exactly. It sounds like, you know, <laughs> um, it was, uh, stop being so bitter, folks. That is on March 9th at 4 p.m. Um, at JFK Arena. You can find tickets by, I just Googled um, March 9th charity hockey JFK and it came right up. There's, you can buy your tickets on Eventbrite. I also want to remind people, New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, or no, New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, geez. <laughs> New Hampshire Liberty Forum takes place on Friday, uh, March 15th, and Saturday, March 16th, Tulsi Gabbard, Glenn Jacobs, a great lineup of dozens of speakers and topics. Um, you can get tickets for that at nhlibertyforum.com. Great event in Nashua. Um, if you, I, I if put you out, have any interest in liberty, it's worth um, worth going. And honestly, you know, there are a lot of naysayers out there. This is a great event to actually just come meet people mm. and see we're not like eight-headed monsters, yep. but that we actually really care about our friends, our neighbors, the state of New Hampshire, and that we're trying yep. to come up with those out-of-the-box hacks for the mess yep. that the previous generations Fair. have created. And so we'll be talking about right to know, we'll uh, be talking education, about education. Pronatalism, crypto, blockchain, um, all the good sound stuff. money policies, you know, uh, defend the guard, currencies, food freedom, all sorts of like stuff. Like all of it. Real so estate. if you're like, hmm, who are it's these neat. folks? Come to nhlibertyforum.com. Um, yeah, there's it's all sorts fantastic. of ticket options. It's worth the trip. Um, that's all we have. Um, winter's back for a day or so. Tomorrow's going to be like 30 degrees colder. What is it? So this yeah. is so interesting <laughs> to me. It's these um, fluctuations, sort of vast things. And, I think it's and, El Nino. I just think well, it's... Well, so, so I think what's happening is, I mean, there is geoengineering happening, right? Sure. So different places are doing it. And, and uh, so, so the funny thing is, if you don't believe that America's doing it, believe China is doing it, if that's how you have to enter it into your little noggin, mm -hmm. right? But it occurred to me, I think what's starting to happen is different countries were doing different geoengineering. And it's screwing everybody and up. And it's basically maybe. like, it's because, you know, maybe if you're making it rain in the Gobi Desert in China, you're doing something sus to, you know, the, the current in South Africa, and yep. suddenly everything's weird. So I think these vast fluctuations... Are, are, you know, sort of something something odd and strange. Um, if you have any questions, if you can't figure out Liberty Forum, if you want to know about the hockey game, if you need to know what the weather's going to be next week, whatever, <laughs> we'll you let can you email know. us at <laughs> manchtalk at gmail.com. That's all we have. We'll be back next week Bye, in guys. March. Bye.